You go get that, you go get that froggy like that. Get that froggy like that. You know what froggy I'm talking about. Uh, hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times in paradise, at the lonely bugs in a jar farm on this unbelievably gorgeous day. Friday, June 4th, 2021. Uh, good God, what a fucking week it's been. You know, I think we we know what I've been dealing with so far this week. So that with, with everything going on in my fucking life this week, with everything going on in my fucking life, I have managed to uh, get, I, I, I don't know, railroaded, hoodwinked, whatever the fucking word is, in, into getting back involved in, in these goddamn interviews on Collapse Chronicles, which I got out of my life uh, a, a fucking year ago. I cut them out of my life. Okay? And, uh... Thought they were gone for good. All of the fucking stress surrounding these goddamn interviews, and uh, somehow in, in the in the middle with with all of this fucking shit show going on in my brain this week, I uh, I, I got corralled into doing an, an interview for, for six o'clock tonight. Six o'clock on a fucking Friday absolutely gorgeous day. How much of my fucking day ha have I wasted, uh, you know, getting ready, preparing for this interview? Uh, it's unbelievably gorgeous day. Could be the last beautiful spring day before the fucking 90 degree heat hits tomorrow, spending all of this fucking time and stress, sitting there getting all getting all dolled up, shaving, doing all of this shit, all of this fucking uh, shit on the computer to get ready. Unbelievable amount of fucking stress. Uh, fucking myself out of this beautiful day. And then Ben, you know, down there in Australia, this young man, getting out of bed, getting out of bed at the fucking crack of dawn, on a Saturday morning, you know, he runs the controls. And the dude, not Ben, the, the, the dude I was going to interview is just a, a fucking no-show. Just a no-show. Uh, he won't answer his fucking phone. He won't answer his emails. Uh, not a call from him. Not an email. I feel like I have been ghosted all over again. Uh, you know, apparently a lot of other people have a much easier time cutting shit out of their life. Dulcinea had no fucking problem. Uh, one day, uh, w one day she's on her way up here to be my fucking uh, doomer chick forever, and then nothing, D just just disappears off the face of the fucking planet, J just ghosting me. No explanation. All of our plans to spend the rest of our lives together uh, dealing with this fucking shit, uh, getting ghosted by that psycho bitch, and, and, and now here we are getting ghosted by this guy. Just no fucking explanation. Just obviously he had something better to do with his fucking life. Uh, you know, just, just clip uh, it would, you know, a, a fucking phone call or an email would be nice. You know, just, just to let us know. So now, uh, we don't know. Maybe did, did a fucking volcano go off down in Mexico? We don't even know what fucking country the guy is, is in on the planet. So anyway, I've been thinking, uh, about cutting things out of my life. What the fuck? do I need to cut out of my life? And uh, actually, so I was uh, on that rant on Wednesday about getting my fucking brain back, reclaiming my goddamn brain uh, from my heart and my dick and, and, and getting this psycho bitch out of my fucking life. Uh, I was going to close that rant with this comment 
from uh, Don Juan Matus, you know, Carlos Castaneda, I opened that rant uh, with a Carlos Castaneda quote, and I meant to close it with this quote, one of, uh, one of my favorite quotes from Castaneda, making sure I got it right. This is from Journey to Eastlawn, Journey to Eastlawn, which is my favorite book of the series. Uh, Take it away, Don Juan Matus, and uh, give me a fucking teaching that I obviously have forgotten about. <clears throat> Take it away, Don Juan. We hardly ever realize that we can cut anything out of our lives any time in the blink of an eye. Just cut it out of your fucking life. Walk the fuck away from it. Make a new Stan plan. Make a new plan, Stan, or whatever the fuck that Paul Simon song is. 50 ways to cut a psycho bitch out of your fucking life. Uh, I guess he wrote that song before the word ghosting uh, was invented. Uh, just, you know, what he's saying here... It's obvious what he's saying. Uh, it's unfortunately, obviously, it can't be true in all cases. Uh, but what he's saying is, you know, when you are are stuck in a rut, and 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 you're you're putting up with fucking bullshit uh, in your life. Uh, whether, whether it, it, you know, whether it be a bad relationship, a bad marriage, a bad job, it, you don't like where you're fucking living, uh, who you're living with, whatever, <coughs> fucking give it up. Start <coughs> a new path. We hardly ever realize Uh, and, he, and he makes it sound so easy just to cut this shit out of your life. You know, a year ago, I, I cut these fucking interviews out. I just kissed goodbye. All of this fucking stress and this fucking bullshit, like I'm going through ruining another beautiful day, just so somebody can just, well... I, I, as I say, I, I guess like Dulcinea, uh, after, you know, making a date and, and, and whatnot, uh, just found something else better to do, uh, just changed their mind. Um, you know? Things I need to cut out of my life, and uh, we, we can all make this list, but, but of course... Uh, as who, who was it? Chris Christopherson. What was that line? Uh, I could die explaining that the things that they complain about are things that they things they could be changing, but no one wants to hear. Nobody fucking wants to hear it from you when uh, you see somebody putting up w w w with, with this power-sucking, soul-sucking, brain-rotting whatever in their life. Uh, you, you know, you, you see these, you, you see your friends uh, in, 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 these, in, in these goddamn uh, relationships with psycho bitches or with husbands who don't fuck them anymore or uh, with some asshole fucking boss uh, whatever, uh, you know, dealing with, and, and, you, and you try to get out there and, and, and show people uh, that there's other ways of doing things. Uh, nobody wants to fucking hear it. Uh, you know, it, it took fucking... Uh, it, it took, uh, you know, heroic doses uh, of, of goddamn mushrooms, uh, ayahuasca, and San Pedro cactus uh, for me to, to cut a, a, a fucking six-figure job out of my life, a beautiful home out of my life, 
pussy out of my life. Uh, top shelf weed, 300 friends, picking parties. Uh, that's what it took to convince me to cut all of that stuff out of my life so I can end up here 12 years later uh, fucking alone and celibate and, and talking to my little imaginary friends about cutting shit out of their fucking lives. Oh, fuck. In the blink of an eye, we can just cut it out of our lives. Yeah, Don Juan, like in the blink of an eye, uh, I, I can just cut that, uh, cut that psycho bitch down there in Florida. That, that psycho bitch is a lot tougher to cut out of my life than Dulcinea. Yeah, just, just cut that bitch out of your life, Hambone. Uh, unbelievable amount of fucking power that I've given uh, dealing with that shit in Florida. Uh, I mean, I haven't even gotten into the fucking rant uh, how, fucked, how fucked I've gotten with that goddamn uh, former, now defunct hip camp down there in Florida. Just cut it out of your life. Yeah, cut it out of your life. Yeah, right, Don Juan. Walk away from what thirty-five thousand fucking dollars I, I have dumped into that fucking hole down there. Uh, the amount of shit I'm gonna have to eat uh, dealing with that shit. You know, every every one of us uh, ha have something that we can cut out of our lives just like that in a in the blink of an eye. Uh, you know, what do I need to cut out of my life uh, 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 other than uh, thinking about going back into doing these interviews? Well, I really have, guys. I, I mean, all kidding aside, I'm making great progress on cutting Dulcinea out of my life. It won't be much longer that I will come on here and cut that bitch out of my life. But, but Dulcinea is not what I need to cut out of my life. As my MGTOW buddies are explaining to me, it, it, you know, it, 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 if you cut Dulcinea, she's already cut me out of her life, uh, out of her life. So just as soon as I return the favor and, and, and cut that fucking bitch out of my life, it, it's not going to solve the problem. It, she is not what I need to cut out of my fucking life. What I need to cut out of my life is, 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 this, uh, is this fucking obsession, this compulsion, this driving force that I need a, a woman in my life to complete my life, that, uh, that I have this big hole in my heart or this big hole in my life that only a woman can fill. And uh, obviously, th this is one of the big misconceptions, according uh, according to Don Juan. Uh, although Carlos Castaneda sure as shit uh, didn't cut women out of his life, uh, that guy had more pussy around him than Guy McPherson does. You know, got goddamn Castaneda. He had a whole fucking, you know, harem. I guess you would call it a coven. Oh, uh, fuck. That's what I need to cut out of my life. You, you, you cut, you, you know, you, you cut a symptom of the problem out of your life, and, and all you're going to do is, is, is come up with another symptom uh, soon enough. It's the fucking disease. And uh, I, I, I've simply got to cut this out of my life. Uh, but, it, but it ain't that easy uh, in the blink of an eye. <clears throat> but anyway, as long as I'm sitting here... Uh, why do I have a spoon in my... I know why I have a spoon in my pocket. I was... Uh, you know, my, my mama, Elaine Mitchell, you know, after my father died, 
she just said fuck it that the only reason that she was starving herself was to look good for a man uh, i mean so i've been on this diet uh for the past two or you know trying to get back in shape to get rid of this fat ass belly of mine so i could look good uh for some uh for some anorexic dulcinea but now that i don't have a fight so part of Part of my process of, of, I guess, the first step on the path, the first step on my new path um, to, to cut this fucking obsession that I need a fucking woman in my life to, uh, you know, to complete my life uh, is, is I'm going to eat all the fucking ice cream. This is so... Whenever I find a tub of ice cream, just like my, my mama said, uh, you know, she was, after, after every kid, she went back down to 127 pounds. After five kids. I was born, she was 39 fucking years old when I was born. She goes back down to 127 pounds. Uh, you know, basically a 40-year-old woman with five fucking kids so she could look good for her man. Well, her fucking man died fucking some little bimbo. Uh, my, my daddy, well, I guess he wasn't the Sancho. Uh, the, you know, he literally died. He literally died uh, fucking... Uh, he was a doctor. He literally died in a motel room in Pensacola, Florida, fucking one of his nurses, uh, probably probably half his age, uh, w with a wife and five kids uh, back in fucking Atlanta. And I wonder why the goddamn universe uh, isn't letting me fuck another man's wife. But anyway... Uh, so after he died, she said, fuck this. I don't need to look good for this fucking jackass Sancho or whatever you call that in Spanish. Uh, uh, he's fucking dead. I'm going to eat whatever the fuck I want to, get as fat as I fucking want to, and, and to hell with all of these goddamn men, uh, you know, like my father, uh, you know, who, who wouldn't stick their dick in, in anybody with a fucking BMI uh, more than about 22. Uh, and she immediately blew up to fucking 180 pounds, and that's right where she stayed. I'm so today I'm gonna cut out starving myself to look good for a fucking skinny woman. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna start down the path with mouth uh, to eat all the fucking ice cream that I fucking want to. Uh, fuck this two percent milk shit. Uh, I, I'm gonna get the full fat milk. But anyway, as long as I'm sitting here enjoying uh, this, and I've, uh, let's listen to a few more Don Juan Matus quotes from Carlos Castaneda. Okay, uh, we hardly ever realize that we can cut anything out of our lives anytime in the blink of an eye. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is read the full, uh, you know, where the quote about the path with heart. This is uh, a, uh, a, a much longer quote. You know, Don Juan talks a whole lot about the path with heart and, and about paths in general, paths are a recurring theme uh, in the works of Carlos Castaneda. Uh, I won't get into this whole fucking thing about uh, the difference between omens and affirmations uh, regarding this path right down from me here. Okay, take it away, Don Juan, and give us the full, uh, a, a larger context. <clears throat> okay, anything... It, anything you do with your life, anything is one of a million paths 
Therefore, you must always keep in mind that a path is only a path. If you feel you should not follow it, you must not stay with it under any conditions. To have such clarity, you must lead a disciplined life. Only then will you know that any path is only a path. And there is no affront to oneself or to others in dropping it, if that is what your heart tells you to do. But your decision to keep on the path or to leave the path must be free of fear or ambition. Yes, yeah, so if the reason you are dropping uh, the path that you are on is out of fear, uh, it's going to be the wrong decision, and uh, <clears throat> we could get into a whole nother rant uh, about Don Juan and Carlos Castaneda talking about fear. But one of the recurring themes is basically that any decision that you make that's based in fear is the wrong decision. If, uh, if, if, if you, uh, 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 okay, if the reason you get a, a corona panic vaccine is fear of getting corona panic, you made the wrong decision, and if your decision to not get the corona panic vaccine is out of fear that the vaccine is going to uh, hurt you or kill you, that is the wrong decision. Okay, I've, 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 I've had this rant that there's no difference between uh, these panic sheeple uh, afraid of dying of corona panic than there is the panic sheeple afraid of dying from the f fucking vaccine. If I do get the vaccine, it is going to, uh, to have nothing to do with the fear of getting corona panic. If I don't get the vaccine, it has nothing to do with the fear of the vaccine uh, making me sick or killing me. But I will get to the corona vaccine path later. Okay, back to Don Juan. I warn you, Look at every path closely and deliberately. Try it as many times as you think necessary. So he does give you permission to try a path. The question is one that only a very old man asks, does this path have a heart? All paths are the same. They lead nowhere. They are paths going through the bush or into the bush. In my own life, I could say I have traversed long, long paths, but I am not anywhere. Does this path have a heart? If it does, the path is good. If it doesn't, it is of no use. Both paths lead nowhere, <clears throat> but one has a heart, the other doesn't. One makes for a joyful journey. As long as you follow it, you are one with it. The other will make you curse your life. One makes you strong, the other weakens you. Before you embark on any path, ask the question. And I think we know what the question is by now. Class, what is the question to ask yourself before embarking on any path? Does this path have a heart? 
If the answer is no, you will know it. And then you must choose another path. The trouble is nobody asks the question. And when a man finally realizes that he has taken a path without a heart, the path is ready to kill him. Just a quick note, uh, Don Juan spoke in the masculine uh, all the time, you know, but, but it, it means people, wherever he says man, he means person, him, you know what I'm saying. Whatever he's saying about men is uh, good for women too. Uh, when a man finally realizes that he has taken a path without a heart, the path is ready to kill him. At that point, very few men can stop to deliberate and leave the path. A path without a heart is never enjoyable. You have to work hard even to take it. On the other hand, a path with heart is easy. It does not make you work at liking it. There you go. Okay, I've mentioned before this whole subject of using death as your advisor. Uh, death as your advisor. You know, uh, one of the ways that, that I, at least I interpret this and try to explain this to people is when you're deciding to do something, when you're deciding to go down a new path, whatever that path may be, and you start analyzing yourself into a no, kind of like Dulcinea did when she, you know, when, when she started using her brain, her, she started using her mind's eye view to uh, analyze the situation, and she went into fucking fear mode, uh, and because she was freaked out about all of the things that could go wrong if she left her path without heart uh, to come up here and start a new path with heart. Uh, so when you're, when you're making a decision like this, what you ask yourself is what is the worst that could happen? And, uh, you know, what is the worst thing that could happen if I make this decision? And unless the answer, I guess, is I could die, uh, then, you know, uh, if, if that's not in the answer, then take the path. That's kind of the way I look at it. All right. Death is the only advisor that we have. Whenever you feel, as you always do, that everything is going wrong and you are about to be annihilated, turn to your death and ask it if that is so. Your death will tell you that you are wrong that nothing really matters outside its touch. Your death will tell you, I have not touched you yet. Okay, then, uh, of course, hand in hand <clears throat> with all of this is the notion of freedom. <clears throat> uh, seeking freedom. <clears throat> But as, uh, this is a recurring theme. This is just uh, one of the quotes. Uh, to seek freedom <clears throat> is the only driving force I know. Freedom to fly off into that infinity out there. Freedom, freedom to dissolve, to lift off, to be like the flame of a candle which in spite of being up against the light of a billion stars, remains intact because it never pretended to be more than what it is, a mere 
candle. Yes. Uh, let's see. Here's one uh, that he talks a lot about is dealing with other people. Dealing with other people. I, I love the uh, email I got uh, <clears throat> from Kim down. In, I got a two-word email from my friend Kim down in Florida today. People suck. Yes, Kim, people suck. And uh, I guess Kim is a reader of, uh, <laughs> of uh, Carlos Castaneda. <clears throat> this so you will read many uh, spins on this one. <clears throat> Think about it. What weakens us is feeling offended by the deeds and misdeeds of our fellow men. Our self-importance requires that we spend most of our lives offended by someone. Yeah, so every day we can take a census of how many people have offended us uh, and every time uh, you let some psycho bitch uh, ghosting you uh, eat your fucking power, uh, you know, walking around being offended uh, by everybody, all you're doing is giving them uh, power. All right, uh, but we are going to wind up with this quote, which says it all, also from Journey to Eastland. Uh, nobody knows who I am or what I do. Not even I. <laughs> yes, Don Juan. That certainly sums up my life. Nobody, especially Hambone Little Tail, has any fucking clue who I am or what I do. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because I have to go find my little dog. He's out chasing froggies. Are you out getting the froggy or what like that? There's a pup. There's a froggy in there. And I need to get that froggy like that. Bye guys.